what's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're finally gonna be breaking down the new aftermarket part for the Haymaker, and this is the Jack Maglift kit. And what this does is, just like with the Core 45's kit, this gives you binary fire on the Haymaker, so the gun will fire every time you pull the trigger, and again, every time you release the trigger. And to top this off, you get a 60 round drum mag when you put this on, so this is extremely spammable and you don't need to reload very often. As we can see, that fire rate is very impressive. However, I do want to point out in the advanced stats, it mentions the rate of fire is 500 rounds per minute. However, in my testing, it was consistently 468 rounds per minute, and I couldn't get any higher than this. And I don't think this is a trigger finger issue, because I'm able to hit this rate of fire very consistently, as if I'm definitely hitting a cap. So I believe there's some kind of minor delay mixed in there that slightly reduces this compared to the advanced stats. But I mean, at the end of the day, 468 rounds per minute versus 500 rounds per minute doesn't really matter all that much. This is still a very fast rate of fire for a shotgun. Now, what this means with this rate of fire is with a two shot kill, we're killing in 128 milliseconds, which is incredibly fast. And a three shot kill is 256 milliseconds, which is still a highly competitive time to kill. That's going to be beating most guns up close. Now, let's have a look at our range values compared to the base Haymaker, and the first thing you'll probably notice is there is no more one-shot kill potential. Even to the head at point-blank range, it won't be a one-shot kill. However, we can get those two shots really close together. Like I said, 128 milliseconds apart. That's very, very fast. And there's actually two separate two-shot kill ranges I want to talk about here. From 0 to 6 meters, this is where we're capable of dealing 100 damage per shot fired, assuming all the pellets hit. And as a result, I consider this to be the very consistent two-shot kill range, where it's hard to not get a two-shot kill here. Whereas from 6 to 12 meters, this is where we still have a two-shot kill potential, but now we're dealing 76 damage per shot, again, assuming every single pellet hits. And what this means is it's quite unforgiving with a two-shot kill in this range. And oftentimes in this range, you will end up with a three-shot kill rather than a two-shot kill. After that 12 meters though, until our maximum hit potential, which is 22 and a half meters, this is where we are capable of still getting a three shot kill, even at the outer ranges of that. If you're at 22 meters, you can still get a three shot kill, but you do have to be hitting most of your pellets. And as a result, I just call this a three plus shot kill. And overall, while we don't get that one shot kill that the base Haymaker has, outside of that, we get significantly better time to kill values within each given range. As for the next thing that this kit changes, this is actually our hip fire spread, and it significantly improves our hip fire spread, both maximum and minimum. As you can see here, I have the base haymaker spreads in just in these circle parts, instead of the average like I would normally do on the gun guide. And you can see our spread is very nicely tightened here just by using this one attachment, and you can take it much, much further. In fact, you can actually get a zero degree per second hip fire spread with just a few other attachments on there, and that means all of your pellets will go in the same hole, at least for the first shot that you fire. Also, just thought I'd throw in here, our aim down sight spread is pretty tight, but it doesn't tighten up nearly as much as our hip fire spread does compared to the base. And let's dive a little deeper into that. Something I also noticed is with your tack stance spread, when you improve that with a couple attachments, even if that value is higher than the aim down sight spread value, it turns out we actually get a tighter spread while in tack stance compared to aiming down sight. So it doesn't actually align perfectly with the advanced stats there. And what this means is if you just put a few attachments on to tighten up your spread, even if you don't have a 0.0, .0 degree per second spread for your tack stance, technically speaking, we can still get that 0 degree per second tack stance spread meaning that at least with that first shot you fire, all of those pellets go in the same hole. But then if you do release that trigger fairly quickly, by the time the second shot goes off, that spread has widened from the first shot, and therefore you'll see a little bit of inaccuracy at least with the second shot fired. Now, in order to compensate for that, we can also just ensure that we're improving our hip fire spread max, so that will limit how much it's able to spread after you fire shots and how much it'll spread as you spam it. Or, of course, what you can do here is just pace your shots a little bit. Don't spam it at the maximum fire rate, just hesitate a little bit, give it time to retighten, and then fire your second shot, and that second shot will be perfectly accurate again. And there we go, that wraps it up for all of the important stats and things to know about this kit. In general, I think this is an overall improvement over the base Haymaker, and I would definitely rather be using this kit than the base Haymaker. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised at all if this ends up catching a nerf at some point in the near future, largely because it can be very frustrating to play against. It's hard to compete against this, especially in the close quarters maps. This gun with this kit absolutely dominates. And I know they made some adjustments to this a couple days ago, literally the day it came out, they made some adjustments, but those adjustments weren't just a straight up nerf or buff. They were kind of a mix of both. And if anything, I think that made this kit a little bit more powerful than it was when it initially launched. So yeah, I do anticipate a nerf at some point in the future, but I guess time will tell on that. 
And with that, let's now move into a couple attachment combinations I wanted to share for you guys with this Jack Maglift kit. And the first one is my nice balance build while using this kit. And with this, we've got the Crown Breaker Choke, the Stovall DR Laser Box, since this is not a visible laser. Sure, you could get other lasers that give you a tighter spread, but you don't need a tighter spread, and I like not having a visible laser if possible. We're using the No Stock Mod to help with handling and mobility stats, and the Blitz Tactical Grip to help with sprint out time as well as our tax stance spread. And with this one, the big key here is our spread. Our minimum hip fire for just standing still, this is 0.1 degrees per second, which within the ranges we're gonna be using this shotgun, that effectively means all of your pellets are going in the same spot, at least for that first shot that you fire. So you've got an incredibly accurate first shot, and the second shot won't be that bad because our maximum hip fire spread is still very tight with this. And that means you could actually just walk around the map hip firing a ton if you wanted to. However, if we go into tax stance, while our tax stance spread in the menus is technically 1.4 degrees per second, in game, this is actually 0.0, .0 meaning you can be perfectly accurate in tax stance. And therefore, if you want that follow up shot to be even tighter, just stay in tax stance or transition into tax stance as you're shooting. And that will give you a super accurate gun with solid handling and mobility stats. Now with this one, it's worth mentioning, we aren't changing our range values at all compared to the base version with this kit, but that's okay, because we have that great consistent two shot kill range at six meters, and then we have our two shot kill potential at 12 meters, but honestly, even if it takes you three shots to kill, you're still killing much faster than most of the guns in the game. So that's the first one, and honestly, my preference just because it's nice and balanced. However, I did want to share a build that's designed a bit more for the extremes, and this is my ranged mag lift build. With this one, we're once again using the Crown Breaker Choke Muzzle. Now we're using the Imperator Long Barrel to improve our ranges. We've got the Bruin Bastion Angled Grip, and then once again, that Stovall DR Laser Box. And with this one, we now have a literally zero hip fire minimum spread. Our hip fire maximum spread is just 1.5 degrees per second as well. So even if you're spamming this, it never really gets all that wide when it comes to your overall spread while hip firing. And again, just like with the previous build, if we go into tax stance, we have a zero degree per second tax stance, meaning that first shot will be perfectly accurate. And any follow-up shots with this one as well are still gonna be very, very accurate in tax stance. Now this one, of course, does come with some downsides, and this is our aim down sight speed is quite slow at 372 milliseconds, but in tax stance, we don't actually need to take that full 372 milliseconds. And our sprint out time is also not great. It's 284 milliseconds. So this isn't really a build designed for sprinting around like crazy. It's much better for like walking around the map with your sights up, ready to go. And if somebody comes in front of you, they're in big trouble. Especially because with this, we are improving our range values nicely. Our consistent, almost guaranteed two shot kill range is 8.2 meters, which is great for a shotgun. And our two shot kill potential is now 16 meters, which is insane. And that's not even mentioning the fact that we can still hit our target at 30 meters. I wouldn't recommend trying to challenge a gunfight at 30 meters though, but I did want to point out, you can. So there we go, that's a great longer range build if you just wanted to try something a bit different. Again, I lean more toward the first build just because the handling and mobility is significantly better. But with that, this is where I'm curious to hear from you guys in those comments down below. How are you guys feeling about this new Jack Maglift kit for the Haymaker in Modern Warfare 3? Do you think this kit's any good? Do you think it's too powerful, maybe? Just let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.